Good evening and welcome to the City Council meeting for Monday, May 6, 2024. We will begin with a roll call and determination of quorum. Bieberdorf? Here. Maher? Here. Roberts? Here. Stroman? Here. Pettigrew? Here. Seacrest? Here. Lehman? <coughs> Ham? Here. Evans? Roseland? Here. We have a quorum. Uh, thank you. Before we get to our invocation, I uh, just wanted to uh, publicly recognize the passing of former council member Jerry Wright. Uh, he served our community, uh, our city, and our country, and uh, just wanted to take a moment of silence before we begin uh, tonight's proceedings. So if you'll please just uh, take a moment with me. Thank you. Uh, tonight's invocation uh, will be uh, given by Pastor Craig Moore, and that will be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. So if you are able and willing, would you please rise? All right. Mayor, City Council members, thank you for the opportunity to pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for your presence and for your direction and for your guidance. Lord, let your presence fill this room, fill, fill these people's hearts and minds, Bless our mayor. May your hand of guidance be upon him. Help him to lead by your Holy Spirit. Help him to trust you and to acknowledge you in all he does. I pray, Lord, that you will help him to see clearly the things that he needs to see and hear your voice as you direct his path. Give him wisdom and discernment. Help him to lead with your presence, grace, and vision guiding his life. Lord, I thank you for all of our city council members. May they have a spirit of wisdom and understanding that comes from you. Help them to do the right things, Lord. May they have a spirit of wisdom and discernment that comes from you, Lord. May they lead with a spirit of compassion and a spirit of truth. May our government function in a way that blesses our citizens and leads to your blessing over this city as well as its success and prosperity. Lord, bless all of our law enforcement officers and our firefighters. Keep them safe. Give them wisdom and discernment. Bless all of our first responders. Help keep them uh, safe. Help them to do their jobs with excellence. I pray, Lord, that you'll give them health and strength, wisdom and discernment. Lord, bless our, bless our school board, our administrators, and our teachers who influence our children and our young people. May they influence our students in ways that are pleasing to you and cause them to live healthy, productive lives that benefit others. Lord, bless the business community. May our businesses and our community thrive. May our economic uh, situations, Lord, be blessed by God. Lord, bless the churches and the charitable organizations of this city. May they be a blessing to our people and meet the needs uh, and make a big impact for good in this city with the message of the gospel and with hope and peace. God bless this city. Bless it with love, joy, hope peace, courage, and creativity. Help us to be a shining example of what a city dedicated to God really looks like. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I'll now entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. Got a motion by Robert, second by Ham to adopt. All in favor? Any opposed? Agenda is adopted. Uh, next, we'll move on to general public comment. Uh, this is a time for members of the public to discuss or express concerns to the council on any issue not on the agenda. Action will not be taken at the meeting on any issue not on the agenda except by placement on the agenda by unanimous vote of the council members present. And just to let you know, we'll have the countdown clock right here uh, above me, I believe. Yep. You'll see that obviously when it's yellow, uh, time to wrap up. So we will begin with Adrian Epp. Hello. I feel like I haven't been here in a while, but I think I only missed one. Um, I think you should understand that signalized intersections are very inefficient. They tend to have a lot of lost time and, and can 
can back up traffic during inconvenient times of day. And then on top of that, they tend to be dangerous. People running red lights all the time, pushing, uh, pushing through on yellows when they, when they sh know they shouldn't. Um, and so you, we see a lot of accidents happening in intersections, a lot of pedestrians being hit and all of that. Um, and yeah, signalized intersections are just terrible. There, there are places where they are good to be used, but when we have pretty much all of our intersections in the city being signalized, it's inefficient and it wastes a lot of taxpayer money. Um, we, you should be not, not even just encouraging, you just need to tell uh, public works to build more roundabouts. Give them no option, just tell them they need to build roundabouts. It would, it would uh, prevent uh, unnecessary spending like uh, the Sheridan Lake Road Reconstruction Project. Yes, I'm bringing that up again. Um, because it could have been avoided if they had just decided to, instead of widening that road, putting a roundabout at Catron and Sheridan Lake Road and uh, Corral and Sheridan Lake Road because roundabouts increase throughput. The road was not at capacity. Those intersections were at capacity. When, when you were told that the road was at capacity, it was kind of a lie. It wasn't the truth. It was those intersections because those intersections are terrible. They are inefficient and they're dangerous. Roundabouts uh, decrease fatal accidents by 90%. This is not, these aren't statistics you can argue with. This is proven. Roundabouts are safer. So let's stop wasting city money and, and uh, wasting city lives and let's build more roundabouts. Thank you. Next up, we have Sonny Red Bear. Hi there. Um, my name is Sunny Red Bear. I'm a community member. And um, I'm here today to discuss the upcoming construction of the new women's prison here in Rapid City and to address several outstanding concerns about the impact that it will have on our community. So I'm, I'm basically going to pose a bunch of questions just to plant some seeds for thought. Um, contractors in construction, consider, uh, we're just trying to figure out who are the contra contractors selected for this project, um, what was the criteria for their selection, how they are equipped to handle such a significant community project. Also, city funding and financial transparency. Is there any city funding being allocated to this project? If so, how much of the city's budget is being directed towards the construction of the prison? And were there other potential uses for these funds that were considered? Traffic impact and studies. Given the already challenging traffic conditions in the area planned for the prison, which is over by Menards, by the, um, the hub, um, and also a potential uh, a neighborhood that's being constructed. Uh, so given those challenge, uh, challenging traffic conditions in the area planned for the prison, have any traffic impact studies been conducted? And what are the plans to mitigate any additional congestion that is with that will um, this new construction may cause? How and why was the decision made to build a prison so close to a thriving retail hub in a developing residential neighborhood? Um, and the last is the addiction services and treatment centers. Um, in Rapid City, we face a significant shortage of full service addiction treatment centers, which are essential for effective rehabilitation and reducing recidivism. Building a new prison does not directly address the critical service gap. And how does the city plan to integrate or support addiction recovery service within or alongside um, this facility, which is um, truly, which um, recovery service is the way to address root causes of incarceration? And also, how does the state reckon with the multiple studies suggested that drug rehabilitation centers are more effective in, in reducing crime rates than carceral punishment? Um, those are just a few questions that I had, um, have many more, 
but want to start planting these seeds for our community to start really thinking about how you know this new prison is going to be impacting our community in, in a, a new numerous ways I think that a, a, a lot of the funding that's going to be used for this prison uh, part of it was is coming from ARPA funds ARPA funds that were were meant to be created and to support families that were coming you know out of uh, COVID, right? They were supposed to support that recovery. Um, and I believe like $2 million of ARPA funds are going to be used for this prison. Um, also, the prison is going to be, uh, that's, it's going to cost $86, $86 million to build. And I understand that those, those funds are being allocated and have been allocated by uh, Senate Bill 50 right now. But at the same time, like we really need to figure out how to utilize those funds better for our city. Thank you. Next up, Andrew Ironshell. Good evening, relatives, community. Uh, I'd also like to plant some seeds about the women's prison and some concerns that I have. Um, how much of this project's details are being shared transparently with us, the community? What opportunities are there for people like me, people like us, to object to the prison, to voice our concerns and file former com formal complaints about the decisions being made on our behalf? I'd like to touch on ARPA funds as well. Considering the allocation of ARPA funds, why is there a focus on investing in the prison system rather than supporting um, substance abuse um, opportunities before we go to prison? And as a closing remark, as members of this community, it is crucial that we ensure that our resources are not here to build prisons, but here to build parks, schools, opportunities for our youth for our community. We do not need any more prisons in this state or in this community. Thank you. Uh, next up, Carla Schatzenbach. Thank you, Mayor and City Council. I'm here from um, Peace Lutheran Preschool, just trying to raise, uh, raise awareness. I guess it's Awareness Day at City Council of some of the difficulties in licensing a preschool. Um, a little bit of history, uh, the preschool, we were a part-time preschool. We closed that because that didn't seem to fit the needs of the community. We've been working on over two years now of opening a full-time preschool. We didn't do it the year before. We didn't have enough enrollment. We weren't quite where we needed to be. And now we find that if we are gonna operate more than half time, we must be licensed. And whatever the most stringent licensing requirements are, that's what we need to meet. Currently, our license is kind of in limbo. We have been working with the fire department who have been very good, and I'm not here to throw anybody under the bus. But right now we're looking at, in order to open up a preschool, two rooms, 30 children max, we're being told that they can't give us a quote on the installation of a fire alarm or the um, suppression system. We're supposed to be paying $7,000 to get a plan to figure out how much it's gonna cost. We must supposedly have a fire alarm tied into the fire department, which we are being told at this point in time is between fifty and $70,000. If we need a fire suppression system, which the fire chief says, you know, maybe you can get by with just a couple of sprinkler heads, but some of the estimates we have been given from the one person we can get to call us back is over $100,000. So as you can see, it's very difficult at this point in time to move forward. Now, I know there's a lot of changes that have been made at the state level, and we do have people helping us with this, but I do want you to be aware of some of these issues here. The one thing, I know that a church preschool won't be everybody's cup of tea, but it is one of those things that can help the community because we're not doing it to have a money-making venture. We are not doing it to have a profit-based system. All we're trying to do is have it be a mission and be basically self-sufficient. So hopefully um, we can continue working with the fire department, but if anybody has any additional information, if you can connect and help get the communication between the state and the city working, it would be um, very grateful. And hopefully as we move forward um, with the other people trying to get preschool started, we can get some of this ironed up. But $150,000 you know, $50, to put in a fire alarm system to the, um, to the fire department is gonna be kind of out of the budget of most people. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. And uh, final speaker request form for Bishop Joseph.
Good evening, everybody. And uh, it's my privilege to talk with you guys. Uh, honorable, we have mayor and all city council officers and positions people. So I'm here by, uh, by the way, I'm Bishop Joseph, but I, my original name is Boaz Joseph. So I'm just sharing with you something, what's going on in our city. So a couple month, I mean that in January, my, me and my team was praying for city and praying for the nations. And uh, God revealed to us we can have prayer conference because everything God is doing something by prayer. So last year we have worship together at Dal Art Center. It was a good event. So this year God revealed to us to having this uh, prayer conference. So we booked a monument as well because as well we were praying and God revealed to us uh, to pray for the city and I have some people there getting a report because God spoke to me and he said this year will this year that God is going to bless city more and more because the couple of years back when I came here my friend they were they were coming they were asking me don't go to you know that uh, rapid city or or to South Dakota because uh, less people are more cows. You need to come to California. And, and, and God brought me here, and he gave me opportunity to one time pray in the House of Rep uh, Representative and Peer. And I prayed over there, and Mr. Speaker, he gave me prayer, but God put me in my hand, in my heart, something to be special. I prayed over there, and we have seen so, so much things when the COVID showed up, and it was like a more free state, and it was like a famous straight for United States, not only United States, for the whole, you know, the nation, they said there is one state, they're a free state. So this year when we make this uh, event and monument, and I believe that also I'm going to share with you Proverbs 11, 11 said, through the blessing of the upright, a city is exalted. So that's why God spoke to us, and but by the mouth of the wicked is destroyed. So when we were praying, and we were praying for all you guys, and when I didn't have, I didn't know that one day I can come here and to share with you, but God made it before this event. It's unexpected this morning. I, sh I, I found it, uh, the link to how to reach out to you, to tell you, to invite you for this uh, uh, monument, and the beginning was, it was local. We were thinking about the sudden uh, people, they reached me out from nationwide, now 50 states people representative they're coming from they're buying their own ticket they are staying here for two three days and coming for only for prayer thank you bishop and your your time's up sir thank, thank you. you thank you very thank much you. i would like to invite everybody you can join us may 10th the that event will be 10 to 7 okay thank, thank you. you uh that will conclude our general public comment and uh, we will now move on to non-public hearing items items one through 71 and we will open public comment for items one through 63. I do not have any speaker request forms for those items, so we will close public comment and move on to consent items one through 63. Would the council wish to remove any items for separate consideration? Councilor Roseland. I'd like to pull 29, please. 29, okay, any other items? Otherwise, I'll entertain a motion to approve the ballots. Got a motion by Maher, second by Ham, to approve items one through 63 with the exception of 29. All in favor? Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 29, approve appeal and grant exception uh, to 24EX023 from Paul, Paul Bradsky on behalf of Sky Properties LLC to not approve a roadway per figure 2-1 of the IDCM. And with that, I'll go to Councilor Roseland. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the applicant has requested to continue this to the next city council meeting on May 20, 24. Okay, we have a motion to continue to the next city council at May 20th, 2024. Do we have a second? Second, second by Ham. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? That item is continued. Thank you. That will take us to the end of the consent items. 
And we will now begin non-consent items, items 64 through 71, and open public comment for items 64 through 71. I do not have any speaker request forms for those items. So we will close public comment and move on to item 64. First reading of ordinance number 6617, an ordinance updating the process for approving expenditures from the city's capital improvement and vision fund by amending section 3.16.090 of the Rapid City Municipal Code. Move to approve. Got a motion by Roberts, a second by Roseland to approve. And we have a comment from Councillor Stroman. Okay. Okay. Um, I've been looking at this and um, receiving input from other people um, about this particular item and I've gone through the ordinance and the proposals that uh, the proposed changes and I find that the ordinance needs um, more than just these amendments. Uh, I feel like the ordinance is hard to read, it's hard to understand. It's vague, it's ambiguous, it has undefined terms. Um, and I can just take you to a, to a for instance, in 3.16.090, it talks about Division A of this section and Division B of this section. There is no Division A in that section. Um, in further at the bottom of the page, it talks about uh, excuse me, on the next page, it talks about the plan and really the plan has not been defined any, at any point up until then. It's not defined to, not defined or referred to until later in the ordinance. So I think that's out of order and it's confusing. Um, I think that um, the purpose of this um, is obviously, and I don't think it's any secret, is to defund the vision fund account to the point where it's really every five years it's going to be basically meaningless to have the citizen um, driven decisions being made and so I don't think that this is in the best interest of the city. I don't think it defines keywords like community enhancement. Um, I think it's vague there. Um, I think that um, it makes, it's confusing. It's, I, I think it's a poorly written ordinance, um, even before um, our attorney's attempt to uh, amend it. Um, I think we should take a look at this in a way that uh, we could actually have an ordinance that makes sense and can read. And also um, one that would actually um, do the things that we say we want to do. And I've heard things talked about like, well, we want to keep the things that keep Rapid City special. Um, we know we're growing, but we're gonna maintain our identity. But this isn't I, our identity. Building a new maintenance facility is not our identity. Our identity is, is uh, part of our identity as a tourist town, is things that actually um, make this a special place. And I look at some of the previous projects that we've had, um, like, uh, well, the Monument, the Roosevelt Park Swim Center, the Ice Arena, Fitzgerald Stadium, Sioux Park Tennis, those are all things, facilities that will actually bring sales tax revenue into the city and it already has. Whereas some of the other um, things that are talked about by defunding the Vision Fund and going into CIP, those aren't gonna be anything but an expenditure. They're gonna be more maintenance, more employees, uh, more things that just gonna grow government and I'm getting kind of tired of the way that we're growing government here. Um, the, the purpose, the effect of the proposed amendment is to reduce the amount of money available for city driven projects and I think that's wrong. Um, and I guess I challenge the, the mayor rather than looking for an opportunity to raid some available funds for some other projects is to look um, at ways to be more efficient um, and come back to us with ways that we can save money and do more things with less money rather than just continue to spend money. Um, it seems like we've been on a spending spree ever since the ARPA money came in and we don't have that money anymore. Um, 
and I think that, uh, and I'll, I'll give you an example of, of something we can do uh, if we apply ourselves. You know, several months ago, um, I was listening to my um, law partner talk about his investments, and he was going to put um, some money into CDs and interest-bearing accounts, treasuries, very safe investments, but he would get a better rate of return um, than just in a savings account. And uh, I put that together with the $240 million that we had in a cash account here that we go through every month. We say, okay, here's the cash on hand, that, and uh, we have $240 million here, and it's just sitting here um, in, in a savings account or a checking account. So I s saw Daniel Ainsley, the finance director. Real quick, the does, does somebody want to donate time to you? Your, your five minutes are up. Anybody wish to donate time to Councillor Stroman? I'll donate. We'll go with Jesse Ham. Thank go you. ahead. So I talked to the finance director. I said, do we really need to keep $240 million in the bank, or can we run our operations with less than that and invest that money? Are there some restrictions on that? And he says, no, we can do that. And so we took about $130 million, and he went to the banks, and he renegotiated. He put money in CDs and treasuries and safe investments, and then he came back to us at the council and told us, um, we're looking at $9 million in interest income next year that we didn't think we were, didn't know we were going to have. And we didn't have to do anything other than Daniel going over to the banks and renegotiating these things. Those are the kind of things I'd like to see happen rather than um, do something that's actually going to stifle the, the city uh, enhancement projects. And uh, I think for those reasons, I can't support this particular amendment if there's another amendment that will make some sense, I'd certainly look at it. Thank you. I yield. Thank right. you, Jesse. Uh, next up, we'll go to Councillor Pettigrew. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to make a substitute motion to move this item to May 20th, and if I get a second, if I could retain the floor, please. Second. Okay, we got a substitute motion to continue to the May 20th Council meeting with a second by Stroman. And you still have the floor, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I've heard over the years, even before I was on the city council, that um, people believe that some of the money that's been collected in the vision fund should go towards uh, repairing, fixing what Rapid City has in buildings and roads. Um, I want to make it clear I'm a strong supporter of the arts. I was principal trumpet player in the symphony for 25 years. I played in municipal band, so I'm a great supporter of the arts. But having seen some of the projects that the Vision Fund has has moved through the last two rounds, I sometimes question, uh, do we have too much money in there and are too many groups coming forward that um, maybe shouldn't be getting the funds? And that concerns me because we have a lot of needs in this city. Uh, the mayor at his presentation was very clear, and I respect your comments, Mayor, that this is probably the biggest decision this council will make because it's going to affect everybody in Rapid City. I just have a lot of unanswered questions uh, that I would like to spend some more time talking to people on. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a newspaper anymore, so people in Rapid City don't even know this is existing. They don't know this is happening. And um, I think if we pass this, then they will find out what's happened. So I, I would just like the additional time to uh, Councilman Stroman's uh, concern about the way the ordinance is written. Maybe that would give our city attorney staff time to review that. If there are issues there, clear that up. Um, I don't know of a specific time frame that we're you know, constrained to. I don't know an, what another two weeks would do with this process. Um, but I myself would like some time um, you know, to my point, people don't know about it. I've had three emails on this. I had two phone calls today. No one knows. And I just think the public doesn't know what's going on. Those that do are more, more involved. I think um, we need to talk to more people, get their input. And I myself would like time to sit down with the mayor. And uh, I got questions. And... Um, I'm sure the mayor's asking, well, we've had a month to do this. Why haven't you done it so far? But I work full-time, and I'm busy. 
and I got a wife, and I got two kids and two dogs, so I got a lot of stuff going on. But I need more time to process this, and I would just ask for the rest of the council's consideration. I'll probably vote for it, but I'm not there yet. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, next up we go to Councilor Roberts. Thank you, and thank you, Greg. I think you made a lot of good points. Um, I don't agree with all of them, but that's a good thing that we don't agree on everything all the time. <coughs> One thing that I do want to say, though, is we're locked in to half the vision funds for the next 18 years, 20 years for the vision fund. So we're always going to have, or I mean for the monument, so we're going to have that until it's paid off. We're always going to be locked into that. And that's a huge amount of the vision funds money. Um, I am highly in support of taking some of this money to catch up on some of these infrastructure projects that we've got behind on over the years. Um, I'm in support of taking some of this money to put into economic development, into possibly some city looking at doing some possible development. I think there's a lot of things that we could do. I do agree that the Vision Fund has created wonderful projects over the years, absolute wonderful projects. The biggest complaint I've had in the last 12 years, 13 years on the council, has been the Vision Fund has gotten us into an issue, especially if we look at, look at Park and Rec, because we built all these wonderful projects, but there's no O&M costs that were built into them. So we do tens of millions of dollars, if not hundreds of millions of dollars worth of projects, and then we have to support them over the next eternity out of the general fund. I've supported for years finding a way to redo the vision fund where we can put O&M costs into it, which would be highly beneficial to the city and the council, you know, going forward. Uh, but I do agree. I mean, some of these projects may or may not have ever got done. I mean, how, how has Sioux Falls done it all these years? They don't have a vision fund. They've got wonderful facilities there, and they actually have pretty good roads and infrastructure, too. So, you know, it's interesting that this has always been a big fight ever since I've been on the council and way before I was on the council because it's a pool of money that certain groups of people don't have access to or certain gro groups don't have access to and without it they would have to find other means of funding or the city would have to find that means of funding whether you know it's a new soccer field or a new pool or a new tennis court but again <laughs> the biggest in my opinion the biggest you know issue that we have caused ourselves over the years is building all of these huge, beautiful things without any funding source going into the future for operating and maintenance costs. So I think that's one of the things that we need to think about if we're looking at rewriting the Vision Fund ordinance um, you know, going into the future because there's going to become a point where it's no longer manageable, and it's almost getting to that point. I mean, you know, we're looking at a study here at the end of... of the meeting tonight for the lap pool and the dome that you know possibly could go over it. In my opinion, we should just throw that out and keep the fifty-three thousand dollars because I don't think that's probably going to happen because we allocated a million fifty thousand, I believe it was, out of vision funds, which will probably be half of what we need if we do go forward with that project. And where's that going to come from? And again, we can talk about. Maintenance and operations. We know it's going to be four to five hundred thousand dollars a year to operate it. Where's that money going to come from? I know we just had a CIP meeting recently that we had to take a tremendous amount of money out of Park and Rec to balance that budget. So, you know, it's very interesting that we're looking at a five year reset on some of these things to catch up. And I don't think we're killing the vision fund. I think we're just trying to manage the citizens' money properly and get a handle, maybe a little bit of a handle, on some of the things that we've caused ourselves over time. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. Next, go to Councillor Maher. 
Uh, thank you, Mayor. I, I would just like to say that before I was on the council, I was the chairman of the Vision Fund, and we had a citizens committee that started out uh, three years, it'll be two and a half, three years ago s shortly. We vetted 26 projects from nonprofits uh, within the rapid, within the city limits of Rapid City. Um, we recommended at the end of the at the end of a six month period, we recommended I believe 12 projects to move forward. Um, so we had requests for like 65 million, but we only had I think 23 million um, to allocate. And so we we ranked those projects, and then the city council did their magic and got rid of most of them. And so it's very frustrating for the citizens to go through that long process and kind of give false hope to nonprofits that you're going to get, it's your turn to get five million. You know, every time we build a beautiful project, then you got three more nonprofits that say it's now our turn. Um, we do have some great projects that the Vision Fund improve, or approved and the city approved, like five million for workforce housing with the Community Foundation. Um, the Native American Cultural Center um, was our number one project, and that looks like that's moving forward. I do kind of agree with Rod that we need to understand how are we going to build that next rec center that we, we're going to need 10 years from now. And if the vision fund is pretty much uh, gone, um, there's got to be a method, and I believe the mayor has that in his plan. Again, we're not voting on the plan. We're voting on changing the ordinance, and then we've got to do the plan. But I think there's opportunity for community projects to continue. It just it negates the necess to the ordinance that you do not actually have to have uh, a vision citizens committee that spends an awful lot of time going through an awful lot of projects that, that at the end of the day don't get funded. So I, I'm okay with waiting for two weeks if, if that can get make Rod more comfortable with it, but I'm ready to support this ordinance tonight. Thank you. Okay, I uh, don't see any other sp speaker lights chiming in. So we have a substitute motion to continue this ordinance reading till the city council meeting on May 20th. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. All right, let's, let's, let's do a roll call. I should have known better. <laughs> I should have known better. Rookie mistake. <laughs> all right, Heidi, would you go ahead and do the roll call, please? Bieberdorf. A no to the substitute. So to be clear, you're you're voting yes or no to the substitute motion to continue. So it's a yes or no. no Maher. No. Roberts. No. Stroman. Aye. Pettigrew. Aye. Seacris. Ham. Aye. Roseland. Motion fails to continue. All right, and that takes us to the original motion, and that is to approve the ordinance. Motion by Beaverdorf, second by Secrets to, oh, the motion's already there, actually. Excuse me. So we need to just go to another roll call vote on the approval. As a reminder, Roberts and Roseland were the ones who uh, gave the original motions. Beaverdorf. Maher, Aye. Roberts, Aye. Stroman, no. Pettigrew, no. Seacrest, Ham, no. Roseland. Aye. Motion passes five to three. Okay. And just as a reminder, that is the first reading. We'll have a second reading as well. Uh, item 65, uh, first reading of ordinance number 6618, an ordinance regarding supplemental appropriation three for 2024. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Roberts, second by Roseland to approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 66, first reading of ordinance number 6614, an ordinance amending section 17.06 of chapter 17 of the Rapid City Municipal Code, a request by FMG Engineering for Western Dakota Technical College for a rezoning request from public district to medium density, res density residential district for property generally described as being located north of East Highway 44 between Mickelson Drive and Valley Drive. Move to approve. Second. 
Motion by Roberts, second by Seekers to approve. All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Item 67, first reading of ordinance number 6615, an ordinance amending section 17.06 of chapter 17 of the Rapid City Municipal Code, a request by FMG Engineering, Inc. for Western Dakota Technical College for a rezoning request from Low Density Residential District 1 to Public District for property generally described as being located north of East Highway 44 between Mickelson Drive and Valley Drive. Second. Motion by Ham, second by Roberts to approve. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 68. First reading of ordinance number 6616, a request by City of Rapid City to consider an application for an ordinance amending area regulations in section 17.10.050, 17 17.13.050, 17.38.040, 17.40, 17.40, 17.60.030, 17.60.030, 17.64.030, and 17.64.030 of the Rapid City Municipal Code. Got a motion by Roberts to approve, a request by Stroman to repeat. Uh, but do I have a second? Second. A second by Roberts to approve. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 69, authorize mayor and finance director to sign professional services agreement with TSP Inc. for project PR24-6194, Roosevelt Pool enclosure in the amount of $52,000. Second. Got a motion by Seacrest to deny and a second by Roberts. Any comments? Okay. All in, but stand by. It looks like Councillor Stroman is going to chime in. There Thank you, you Honor, or Ms. Mayor. <laughs> uh, I'm yeah. Not, I'm not in court. Okay. Yeah, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we, we talked about this at Legal and Finance and my understanding of this request is just to make a, a feasibility study for some sort of covering for the Roosevelt uh, outdoor pool. And it does not mean that we would go with, I think everybody's kind of off the bubble thing now because that the more we learned about that, and I'm glad we learned about it, as John pointed out, the O&M on that would be prohibitive. I'm at a minimum $300,000 a year. And, we can't ask uh, Mr. Beegler to absorb that, but I do think it's worthwhile to see if there is some way that we can eventually um, come up with a way to uh, cover that outdoor pool, and so we would have an indoor facility. So I would be in favor of uh, moving forward with this feasibility study. I yield. Thank you. Next up, Councillor Maher. Yeah, I just kind of like to echo what Greg said. Th this this study will tell us uh, the future of swimming, indoor swimming in Rapid City, and it'll it tell us if we should abandon that that project or look forward into what we could put a permanent roof over that pool. Thank you. Okay. Well, right now, oh, Councillor C. Chris is. Thank you, Mayor. Right. I figured I should chime in and, and um, explain. I'm not opposed to this, um, the idea of a cl enclosed pool. Um, I think that we have an opportunity right now to kind of reassess as we look ahead with the project plan, with the vision fund um, changes, that we can um, see if this truly meets the needs of the citizens of Rapid City, um, if this is a project that makes sense to fund. I'm absolutely in support of that if that's what we choose to do as a community. Um, this project was um, anticipated to be uh, much less than what it, it turned out to uh, get bid at. So we're looking at um, double the cost potentially of what it was awarded at with the one million. And um, the latest update on the annual O and M expense is four hundred fifty-five thousand dollars a year, um, and that's roughly twenty percent of the parks budget right now. So until we have a parks funding source. And we have a way to continue to pay for a project um, such as this. I, I just don't think it's responsible to use uh, funds even for a $50,000 feasibility study at this point. I yield. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Councillor Roberts. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm just going to kind of um, go with what Lindsay said here. You know, yeah, this study is probably going to come back and tell us, you know, we could we could build 
in an enclosure over the pool. It's going to cost you six or seven million dollars. We're going to put it on the shelf. We're going to never really take a look at it. It's going to be one of the other hundred studies I've seen in the last 12 years where we did them and we never used them for anything other than to prove that we can't afford it. So in my opinion, $52,000 could probably go a long way in Jeff's budget, um, but I imagine this was going to be vision funds any way out of this. So, you know, if the vision fund, that portion gets turned back, I'm sure there's another project that we could find that would be just as good or better that would enhance more of the community than just this. So anyway, I just think it's a, personally, I think it's a waste of time and a waste of money, but whatever the council decides to do, we'll do. Thank you. And Councilor Pettigrew. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you know, when that facility was built, it was the designed to have an outdoor pool. I don't know why, but I thought that was a good idea. I ride my bike past there all summer long. There's always people sitting out there at tournaments. I guess needs have changed. Um, but I thought part of swimming was swimming outside in the summer. I don't swim, but that's my assessment. But I, I agree with John and, and Lindsay on this. To uh, Councilman Stroman's comments earlier, we spend, spend, spend. When are we going to stop spending and start saving? And this is a prime example. We're going to spend $52,000 and nothing's going to happen. And I just think, as a businessman, I ask myself every day when I make decisions, is this a good investment? I make mistakes, yeah. But I really think I'm through, and I, I believe this is a poor investment of taxpayer dollar to spend $52,000 on this study. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, as a reminder to the council, the motion on the floor is to deny item 69. Let's go to a roll call vote, please. Roseland. Aye. Ham. Seacrest? Aye. Pettigrew? Aye. Stroman? No. Roberts? Aye. Maher? No. Bieberdorf? No. Tie vote, four to four. Four to four. Well, I, in that case, I would like to ask a question to Parks Director Beegler, if I could. Director Beegler, love to get your impressions of this $52,000. Is it going to be something that's going to sit on a shelf to tell us what we already know? Is there other information that we will be able to glean from this? Um, I'm making this strictly about the study, uh, nothing else right now. Love to give you an opportunity to share. Sure. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, this study would give us more information, like everyone has, has, uh, has alluded to. Uh, to make a decision, whether it's a decision in the short term or a decision in the long term. But I think what um, has kind of come out of the, the initial uh, um, request for proposals is that there are several options to covering an outdoor pool, and, and the inflatable dome or bubble uh, is only one of those. And each different um, uh, option would have their own operating costs their own uh maybe return on investments that we you know if one is an is an all year covering the city could perhaps uh, make more money um, in programming more of the pool time of course being up year round it'll have more expenses as well so i think this is just a, a, a tool to gather more information to make a more informed decision going forward is this information you find will be helpful to you in your department? Oh, I, I do think it will be helpful for everyone to, uh, to have this information, whether it is something that's funded now or funded in the future. The, the feasibility of this shouldn't change. The only thing that would change uh, in time would be the, the, uh, the costs, the operating costs and the capital cost. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, with that, the chair votes no on the denial. So now we still need a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Got a motion by Stroman to approve and a second by Roseland. And with that, let's go back to Heidi for a roll call vote, please. Roseland. 
Roberts? No. Stroman? Aye. Pettigrew? No. Seacrest? No. Ham? No. Roseland? Aye. Bieberdorf? Aye. Maher? Aye. Chair, vote, chair votes aye. Motion passes. Item 70. Uh, request by Advanced Design Engineering and Surveying Inc. for Donna Olson for preliminary subdivision plan for Tract 1 revised by Paul Subdivision, generally described as being located as 3579 Reservoir Road. The recommendation is to approve with stipulations. Second. A motion by Roseland to approve with stipulations. Second by Roberts. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. And item 71, approve the attached list of 2024-2025 malt beverage and South Dakota farm wine renewals per verification and approval from the Rapid City Police Department and Rapid City Fire Department. Second. Motion by Ham, second by Stroman to approve. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, that takes us uh, to... Public hearing items 72 through 78, and we will open public comments for items 72 through 78, but I do not have any comment forms, so we will close public hearing items uh, for 72 through 78 and move on to consent public hearing items 72 through 75. Would I entertain a motion for the balance or vote for? Motion to approve them all. Second. Motion by Robert, second by Seacrest to approve 72 through 75. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. That takes us to the end of the consent public hearing calendar. We will now begin non-consent public hearing items 76 through 78. Item 76, second reading of ordinance number 6612, an ordinance amending clerical errors in sections 17.60.120, 17.62.120, and 17.64.120 of Rapid City Municipal Code. Move to approve. Second. Motion by Robert, second by Stroman to approve. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 77, second reading of ordinance number 6613, an ordinance amending clerical errors and fencing requirements in section 17 17.16, 0.030, 17.18.030, 17.18.080, 17.20.080, 17.22.020, 17.36.080, 17.40.070, and 17.66.070 of the Rapid City Municipal Code. Move to approve. Second. Motion by Robert, second by Ham to approve. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 78. Second reading of ordinance number 661410, an ordinance amending section 17.06 of chapter 17 of the Rapid City Municipal Code, a request by Williams and Associates Architecture, Inc. for Black Hill Surgical Hospital, LLP, for rezoning request from low density residential district one to office commercial district for property generally described as being located at 201 Anna Maria Drive. Move to approve. Motion by Robert, second by Secrets to approve. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. And we will now move on to the bill list. And for that, we will go to Finance Director Daniel Ainsley. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. The total bills for tonight are $14,983,654.16. Motion by Robert, second by Ham to approve the bill list. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Motion by Stroman, second by Ham to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? We're adjourned. Thank you, everyone.